Welcome back to another vlog. Um, firstly, we'd like to to say thanks to everyone that subscribed. And um, we've hit another milestone, haven't we? We have. We've uh, recently hit 2,000 subscribers, which you know to us is is amazing. Yeah. Um, In such a short space of time as well. Yeah, we never thought we'd hit it this fast. Yeah, we've only been here two months. When you think 2,000 subscribers is probably more than the population of our little village. <laughs> our little vi village here, yeah. So yeah, we'd like to thank you all. Um, we hope you enjoy the videos and continue to enjoy the videos. Stick with us, we appreciate it. We try to pump out as many as we can for you um, and, and try and keep it a bit more, you know, a bit more relaxed, a bit more um, entertaining than, than most. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, th thanks a lot for subscribing. Um, we do appreciate it. Yeah, we do. So, Anyway, today, today in the video, we'd like to talk about how we've escaped the rat race or how we've escaped the matrix. Um, Whatever you call it. Yeah, in our 20s. So, but we'll, we'll, we'll wind it back and talk about how we met first because people like to know about that and in how interracial relationships start because it's quite different, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we're a bit of a different dynamic. Um, as obviously, usually you would see a foreign man and a thai woman so we're like the opposite of that and yeah people look at us a bit funny around here <laughs> people are always so shocked and always come to ask questions of yeah, how yeah. nat did it <laughs> well we went to the Quite beach funny. the other day didn't we yeah and the guy who was selling ice cream he says he's been doing it for 20 odd years or yeah, something and he, he, obviously we bought some ice cream off him on, on the beach and he came and sat down and he was like so how'd you do it then how <laughs> how'd you get a foreign woman um I've only ever seen two in my whole lifetime. Um, you know, two Thai blokes with a white girl or whatever. I'm like, sometimes you just gotta be yourself, you know. Yeah. I, I'm no different to Camilla than I am to anyone else. I, I'm just me, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe I was very lucky or whatever, but yeah, everyone, you're lucky. Se <laughs> yeah. everyone seems to think that it's, um, it's like a mission impossible kind of thing. But anyway, so how, how did we meet? Um, we'll get into that, shall we? Yeah. So <laughs> let, let, let's get along with some chores and we'll, we'll... We'll catch you up. Catch you up on how we met and, and things like that. So, how did we meet? Um, <laughs> Always a good one. Well, long story short, we met on Instagram. So basically, at the time, Camilla had just done... Three months in America, traveling. Yeah, and at the time, you know, I, I was well into my travel. And, and your photography, I think that's mostly it, isn't it? Travel and photography. Yeah, I do like a bit of photography. Um, so I was looking at places to go, and I've always wanted to do a big American road trip. Um, I am still yet to do it, <laughs> but it it might be something later down the line. Um, I'm definitely going to do it one day, hopefully. Um, so I was doing a lot of research because I'm a bit like that. Yeah, he gets a bit obsessed with things. So, <laughs> you know, when, when I get an idea into my head, I, I get a bit obsessive. So I, I research everything. So I must, I don't, I don't know how I found Camilla, but I must have been looking at places. Yeah, maybe locations or hashtags or In America something. and, and I've seen Camilla had just been to these places. So as you do, slide, slide, slide into in the, the DMs, DMs. <laughs> um, you know, because I was trying to cost things up and how much it would cost me, you know, how, how much things are, how much hotels are, how much to hire cars, transport, food, yeah. all that, you know, usual stuff. And we got talking and then... One thing led to another. <laughs> yeah, eventually we just... We met, didn't we? Right. Should we go on a date then? <laughs> um... So we met in London. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the thing they do in Hyde Park in the winter. It's called Winter Wonderland around Christmas time. Yeah. We but, met there and did lots of things. We kind of met we? halfway, didn't we? So yeah. We we just booked booked a train ticket and you know bought the tickets to Winter Wonderland and we just met in London. Obviously, this is the first time of a meeting. <laughs> Quite an expensive date, if I'm honest. <laughs> it's a bit risky as well, isn't it? We spent a lot of money to potentially not like each other. Yeah. 
But luckily, you know, we had a good date yeah. and we had a few nice meals and whatnot out and, and we enjoyed ourselves at Winter Wonderland. And yeah, it's, it's, it's been from there onwards. Um, we were long distance for probably seven or eight months and then I thought, nah, I'm moving in. <laughs> yeah, so after about six months, I was, I was, I was living in, in Stoke-on-Trent. I know, I was living in Hampshire down south. It was about three to four hour drive to meet each other, wasn't it? Yeah, so, you know, she caught a plane. Yeah, flew a couple of times. A couple from of times. To Manchester. Um, I've driven down a load of times. A load of times, um, yeah. Cost a lot of money long distance, but we made it work, you know. After a few months, we moved in together. Then a few months after that, we went off on a few holidays abroad, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. And then obviously Thailand was one of those holidays as yeah. well. And from there onwards, really, um, we... we we both enjoy Thailand and, and you know, we, we've been talking about Thailand pretty much from there onwards, haven't we? Yeah, it's always so, been something we wanted to do, isn't it? So we started planning, like, right, so if we did get together, what is the long-term goal? And, and we both said that we would like to move to Thailand even before we had the kids, you know. Yeah. It's, it's quite early on in our, in our relationship, but... I, I was going to move to Thailand regardless anyway because I've missed Thailand since I've, I've moved to England, if he I'm honest with you. He tells me when he moved here in 2003, that was the last time he's ever cried because all he wanted to do was just come back here. It, it, it's a true story. I'm not very uh, an emotional guy. <laughs> no. So I've not, I've not cried since 2003. It is a true story. <laughs> I mean, you were nine, you were young, but I suppose the feelings are still the same, aren't they? Yeah. It, it, the moment I cried is when, you know, when we got to the house and... And the realization came that, like, right, this, you know, I'm, I'm not moving back now. I'm, I'm, I'm here for the long run. Yeah. And it made me think of, you know, my nans, my uncles, you know, family back at home, and, and things that I'll miss back at home. So yeah, from there on, you know, my, my aim was to always move back to Thailand. So for us, you know, it, it, it's always been there, hasn't it? Yeah, it's always been something we wanted to do. Trying to move back to Thailand. When did we actually really get serious about moving back to Thailand? Um, what made us, you know, right, this is this is when we have to do it. Yeah. It has to be now. Um, so basically, just about um, before when we were going to have Mallory, when Camilla fell pregnant, it changes your life when you have a kid. You have to, you have to think about life in a different way, don't you? So... You have to grow up pretty quick. And obviously your kids become your priority. You do everything for them and you want to give them the best. Yeah. And in my mind, you know, at that time, it's when the world started going downhill. Yeah. Um, the situation happened and then yeah. it started getting expensive and controlling. I mean, we were, we were caged in the, in the house for, you know, God knows how long. And, and you could get a fine if you get caught outside and things like that. And we're like, well, we can't be having the government dictate what we do. My you know? entire pregnancy I spent indoors. Nat couldn't come to the hospital with me, couldn't share that experience with me. First child, it was quite difficult. Yeah, so we, we really, you know, seriously thought about, right, we, we need something to happen here. You know, we I, I talked was, and thought a lot during that time. Didn't you know, we? I was that working time. odd jobs here and there and paying the rent. During that time, the rent went up about three or four times. Um, Obviously or, we understand, everything's going up and yeah. the, the landlords need to make money too, but for a young family, do you know what I mean? We've just had a baby, it's, it's tough. All the bills started going up, you know, electricity prices went through the roof, cost of living went up, food, basic necessities, it all went up. Um, you know, petrol, I was paying almost two pound a litre in petrol just to get to work and back, yeah. I, you know, I'd have to work a day and a half just to pay just for to petrol, just to get to work. Mm. So I was thinking, right, this is not really feasible for the, you know, for the future, especially when, when we've got a kid on the way. Um, we can't be living this sort of life. We, we, we need to get away, really. And obviously, we, we're lucky in the sense that we, we always knew that we had Thailand yeah. to fall back on. I always knew this because obviously I'm from here. And you've got family and yeah. you've got assets and things here. So. And the land and the house is already acquired. So it's an opportunity of a lifetime for us. Um, one that we can't really say no to, you know. Yeah. I, I think you'd be a fool to say no to moving out here. 
So, in, in the back of our minds, all, all we had is, right, as long as we can figure out a way to sustain ourselves out here, um, that, that, that's all we have to do. Yeah. All we have to do is make enough money so we can live out here, you know. We don't have to spend, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you, you young couple, you can't move out here. You need a lot of backing behind you. But for us, we, we're in a bit of a different situation. We are lucky that, you know, the land and, and the house was already acquired. You know, it didn't cost us anything because yeah. um, it was already in the family. It was already acquired. This was already here for us. Um, so why wouldn't we take that opportunity? But then um, we fell pregnant with Kaya, our second daughter, mm. and we were on and ahhing, do we just get a mortgage and stay in the UK? Is, is that the safer option to buy a house there and do it that way? Like what everyone else is doing. And so we were back and forth for a little while. Mm. And then... We just thought, do you know what? No, we don't want to do that. Well, a mortgage wasn't even feasible for us yeah, either. They got to that point. Because, it, you know, everything was going bad in the world and the interest rate was 8%. We would be paying almost double what we were paying renting just yeah. to own the house that we wouldn't be paying off for another 25 Just for a years. standard little two-bedroom, yeah. if we're lucky, semi-detached. And this is up north where it's cheaper. Yeah. I'd have moved down south near my family. Oh, no, we wouldn't be able to afford it. I'd have to, you know, I'd have to fucking start oh, i don't know start. yeah selling feet pictures or something <laughs> but yeah so that, that that's when it really turned for us that's that's when the, you know the cogs start start spinning in the head so you know i get a bit obsessed when when i've got an idea in my head yeah. and it, it's an opportunity that we can't miss so it's, it's, it's now or never you know it, it's now or wait till the kids grow up yeah. and then move a retirement plan. So we're still young, you know what I mean? Um and obviously we knew we knew we had land out here, so I know I, I'm young enough to work on the farm. In 20 years down the line when the kids are growing up, you know, I don't know what I can do on the farm. I don't know how healthy I'm going to be. Yeah. So without sounding morbid, that you're even going to make it that far? Yeah, I don't think I'll live that long. I'm a bit reckless. No, but we've seen like 30 year olds having heart attacks and things like yeah. it's not uncommon now it's it's quite scary anything so, can happen you know what i mean so so why not live your life how you want to well, if you've got the opportunity i say take it like we did you know They're we were telling happy. we were telling everyone that we know all oh, right we're planning on moving to thailand and everyone was like right, have you got have you thought of this have you got yeah. enough money yeah. it, it, it all winds down to money yeah everything. but in reality money is not an issue it money if anything it's less of an issue out here. Yeah. If you don't have money back at home, you can't pay your rent, you can't buy food, you can't get to work even. So it's, and you've always you know. you that threat of someone knocking on your door and taking everything you have just to pay your debts. Yeah, yeah, so. It's quite scary. So for us, m money wasn't an issue. It's like, we come out here and we, we know we have to make money. Like I said, we came out on a whim. We didn't really have anything going for us. We had a, a little bit of savings from how much you yeah. from your last few months at work we sold everything we owned and that, yeah. that's pretty much it and we just knew like we come out here we have to start making money that's why we got the fish in the chickens in we're going to plant vegetables that's our income and um, so got four medium-sized suitcases with us and that's it for a new life Do you know what yeah I mean? so you know when you have an opportunity sometimes you just have to jump at it and sometimes you know we're young and, and we're a bit reckless maybe but Sometimes you gotta take these things as they come. Um, like if we didn't take this opportunity now, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen 20 years down the line. We might not have this opportunity. Um, like we've said, our children are our priority mm. and they've done more in their first two years of life than a lot of grown adults. And I will yeah. always be thankful for that. I'm proud of myself for giving them that. Because we could have stayed in England and just dealt with what we were. Handed, you know well, everyone was like, oh, wait five years, wait ten years. Wait for what? Yeah. You know what I mean? Save up for what? Wait till the kids are in school and then you drag know. them out. That's not fair. You can't really save that much in England anyway. Um, and, well, for our situation, we weren't really saving that much anyway. Mm -hmm. So in ten years down the line, I don't know how much I was going to save. Um, it's not it's not really feasible. And it's, it's one of them things where you have to have the mindset of, right, screw everything. I don't care. I'm going to move out there and I'm going to make it work. You know, I've always had that mindset. A anything I've ever done, you know, if I wanted a Honda Civic, my first car was, well, 
my first car that I bought personally was a little Civic. And I said to myself, I'm gonna get the Type R one day. And lo and behold, somehow, I don't know how, I've always had it in my head, I'm gonna have it. I had it. And then, you know, I said, I'm gonna move out to Thailand, I'm gonna do all these things. Lo and behold, now I've done it. You know, everything I've ever said and done, you know, you just have to believe it yeah. and go a bit crazy. I in your in your mind, you have to you have to be crazy. I think being mind strong is half of the battle. If you tell yourself you can do it, then you can. Yeah. It's only yourself holding you back, isn't it? At the end of the day, so go for it. And my mind, bulletproof. <laughs> I, I don't care what anyone says, That's friends or family. I'll disregard every comment. I don't care. <laughs> if I've got my sights set on something, I, I'm going for it. And you have to. I think you have to be like that nowadays. Um, there's too many what ifs and what if what do you know what i mean like yeah. we've always said it's not in our future plans to come back we've got no intention of going back to the uk mm. but if we had to for whatever reason i don't see ourselves as failures we've no. we've had more life experiences and stuff than a lot of people get and i'm more than happy and satisfied with that but our plan is to stay yeah we want to stay here this is life now i've always said money comes and goes and if i have to move back to england to to start a job or whatever and get back to where we were it's not an issue we'll be back within half a year we'll be back to what what we had in england it is it's really not an issue you know what i mean i'll just go back apply for a job rent a house out voila we're back <laughs> so what's what's everyone's you know worries and what's everyone scared of you know like moving out away from from your comfort zone and whatnot Sometimes you just have to do, yeah. Like I say, you have to be a bit crazy in the head. Everyone will doubt you at the start, you know. Everyone will tell you advice and all these things. But sometimes you can't take advice from people that haven't done it. Um, they'll tell you, you know, oh, you need, you need this much. You need to make sure the kids are safe and all this. But it's just the same as England. At the end of the day, you're just in a different location. We're not doing nothing different. It's just a different location. And sometimes, you know, you just got to do it. Sometimes you just, whatever you want to do, just do it. Just jump out and do it. And we appreciate that we've only been here two months. We might still be living the dream and things will get harder, but we'll deal with mm. that when it comes. We're not, we're not on holiday. Yeah, it <laughs> we'll might make it, it work. It might just be a pipe dream, but at least it's a long holiday. You know what I mean? <laughs> if I was working back in England, I'd get 28 days holiday a year. We've already had double that. So. Yeah, so I, I see Don't it as... It few years holiday so what no one cares <laughs> I don't anyway so we get a lot of people um, asking you know are, are we worried are we scared um, it's, it's a big move for us is there anything that we worried about or you know do we have concerns about anything you know moving out here and truthfully yes you know there's everything to be worried about you know we, we have the same worries as everyone else we just don't show it. In my man, you just gotta keep strong, you know what I mean? You got you got you just put it aside and, and just carry on with it and deal with it as it comes. Yeah, um, there's no point worrying about something that hasn't happened yet. Yeah, so obviously back in England, you know, we, we have the same worries. You know, the the landlord could kick us out of the house anytime. I could lose my job anytime. You know, there's uncertainties anywhere you are in the world, you know. You, health yeah in the family's health that puts a spanner in the works and you might have to take time off or yeah be somewhere else you know pe people tell us you know you have you have to be you have to be prepared for all these things but i always say you just have to deal with these as and when they come you know you, a lot of people spend a lot of their life just worrying about things that they don't have to worry about and and it's little things as well but a lot of little things add up to a big thing. So in the back of their mind, it, it, you know, it's a gigantic thing moving out here. Um, but to us, you know, it, it's basic steps, right? First of all, we need to sell everything. You know, so we did. You know, as, as soon as well, first step is book the flights. Book the flights. Six months down the line, you know, we booked it in December or whatever, um, and we gave ourselves time, enough time. So I think we gave ourselves about six months, didn't we? Yeah. So we booked the flights. It was a bit of a snap decision. Like six months isn't a very long time. No, but, but it's long enough. But we planned it and it was long enough for what we needed to do. Yeah. 
So we put the flights anyway. So as 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 long as the flights booked, right, we're going to Thailand. There, there's no stopping us now, right? It, that's it now. The flights are booked. We're catching that that plane. Whatever happens six months down the line, we don't care. I'm quitting my job, and we, we we're catching that plane. So I bought my flight. I handed my notice in. Give the company enough notice. Yeah, you gave them about five or six months. Yeah, didn't you? pretty as much soon like. As you booked the flights. You pretty much handed your notice in. Just, just to let them know, right? This is my plans. You know, I sat down with my manager and I said, right, I'm gonna move back. Um, this, this is my plans. Obviously, I'm giving you guys six months or five months or however long I gave them. I gave them a long time. Um, it gives you time to give get someone else in. I'm still gonna be there to train. You know, whoever comes and replace me. So I thought I thought I was fair with my company. Um, yeah, we didn't leave anything on bad terms, did we? And then we we knew we had five six months to sell everything you know obviously we, we, we sold things that we didn't need and kept the things that we needed right up until the last moment and um, for example car and things like you know big items like a tv you know we, fridge. yeah the fridge we <laughs> kept that until the very last moment and the things that we couldn't sell we just chucked it in a skip and and, and recycled it yeah just and just chucked it away basically but you know that was part of our income saving my last few months at work and uh, my wages from my work was one and whatever savings we had before that yeah and i did a bit of locum work as well the last few weeks just to top it up that little bit more so, so yeah it helps so obviously we paid our last month's rent and we told the landlord right we're moving out we gave the landlord a lot of notice as well yeah um so we're, we're being fair to everyone we just decided right this is it we're going and that's how we did it, you know what I mean? It's little steps at a time. It's, but if if you worry about these little things, oh, how are we going to save money? How are we going to do this? Then it becomes a big thing, and then you know you end up talking yourself out of it. Whereas us, we we just put the flight right now. We know we have to move back. You know we spent a lot of money on the flights, so it's four plane tickets, long haul flights for everyone. There's no way I'm not catching that plane. I don't care what it is, even if it's a long holiday. We're, we're giving it a go, and that was it. That, that, that that's how we've we've done things, you know. But the flights started selling things, handed my notice, told the landlord we're moving out, told the family. Yeah, people always say, "Aren't you afraid of being away from your family and things?" But I moved away from my family to live with him in Stoke and then Wigan anyway. Mm. And then we left Wigan early, a few months early before we came here so we could spend a lot of time with my family. We stayed with my brother for about six weeks, didn't we, before we moved out here? Yeah. Just and to I was, give us I, that I, time to spend with my family. I stayed with a friend for a couple of weeks yeah. um, just to finish off my job and just finish my notice. But yeah, it, there's nothing really that we were concerned about. Obviously, in the grand scheme of things, yes, because it's uncertainty. We didn't, we didn't know. Like we said, we moved on a whim. We didn't know what it was going to be like out here. We don't know if we were going to make money. We didn't have buyers for the eggs or anything. No. We just had to make it work when we're out here. And obviously, we did. We came out here. We got the chickens in pretty quick. We got the fish in. We got the trenches dug. Things that we had, you know, obviously, like I say, I'm obsessed about, you know, research and things like that. When I have an idea, I'm obsessed about it. So, as soon as we came, we, we implemented those ideas. And we got to work, didn't we? Yeah, we just got to work. And that's how you have to do it. I think sometimes you got to not be afraid of a bit of graft and just get on with it. And a lot of times it will pan out all right. You know what I mean? So. And if it's something you want to do, especially long term, you don't think of it as a job or mm. negatively. You want to do it. Yeah. That makes sense. Sometimes you have to know, right, these are the things that needs to be done and these are the things that have to be done and you just got to get on with it and, and that's all it is. So really we didn't have no big concerns. I suppose how the children would adapt is quite a big one because they're only yeah. young, aren't they? But they've loved it. Well, then again, I, I can only say from my own experience, obviously I moved countries when I was little as well. Mm. Um, obviously a bit older than them, but... So I, I could understand. That's why I was a bit emotional when I moved. I was going to say, know. it's probably a bit easier for them because they don't really yeah. understand. So we thought, you know, while, while they're still young and a bit clueless and, and they don't really know what's happening, we do it now. Because, um, like, like we say, if we moved them when when they were a bit older, 
they might have friends, emotional attachments, they'll start missing family and things like that. And you know, is and then it's more difficult to learn another language. Like you found it really mm -hmm. difficult. You were learning English and Thai. 24 7 in england yeah oh teachers yeah and all sorts it's quite difficult I, was, yeah, I had to work harder than every other kid you know what i mean i, I went to england not knowing a word of english and look at me now <laughs> people I, say you're more english than the, thai. they might as well call me the uh the thai dictionary <laughs> you know what i mean i i i might be somewhere in that dictionary i, I might be definition of english yeah. You don't even know what you're saying. I don't know. I'm just blabbing on now. But anyway, yeah, like, like I say, I had to work harder than every other kid because I didn't know English. My, bearing in mind, I was nine. So, you know, I was a couple of years off from going to high school. And high school is a big school. You know what I mean? It's daunting when there's, you know, a thousand students and you're there not knowing their language. You know, you don't know what they're saying to you. You don't know what you're saying to them. So I, I had a private teacher in school. You know, takes me to a little private room, teach me basic words from everyone else. You know, I weren't really on the curriculum at that time. And obviously I had homework from school. And then when I got back from school, I had a private teacher back at home. He used to come with a cassette tape and a couple of pictures and books and whatnot. And I had homework from her that I had to catch up on. This is all just to learn a new language. Yeah, this is all just to catch up mm -hmm. with, with every other kid. Um, so yeah, obviously I, I had to graft, I had to work. At the time, I didn't really know you know any different. I was only nine, like I say, I was only a young kid. But I knew, obviously, I was working harder than everyone else. I had to. That, that's the only way I, have, I got here, you know what I mean? But what we're trying to say is at least with R2 being as young as they are, mm. they're learning things every day. They're not so, as far behind, you know what I mean? Yeah, so. they're not behind because they've not even learned English yet. Yeah. So. To learn two languages at the same time should be fairly easy for them. Kids are like sponges, aren't they? So hopefully. We hope so. Yeah. We hope so. <laughs> we hope um, our kids have, you know, a decent IQ. I'm sure they will. I think IQ is is what they learn in life experiences. I think it's what they develop during a young age. IQ is not what you're born with. It's it's, it's their life experiences and, and things that they've done from a young age and I think you, you grow up, you know, up in your IQ. But don't get me wrong, there are kids that are geniuses, you know, you know, that have access to different parts of their brains, but I think a lot of a lot of the battle is from life experiences and that, that's what I, I'd like to try and give my kids. And I think you all should as well, if you have young kids, you know, don't let them stay inside and just play video games all day. Yeah. Go out there, give them life experiences. Spend your last penny if you have to. Take them somewhere new. Do things that they've never done before. You know that that that's where they'll learn. That that's that's where their brain will develop. And you know, true life experiences is where they'll develop their brains. You know, get yourself some clever kids. So that's it. Um, we'll wrap the vlog up here. I think we've you know we've covered everything. So yeah, that's that's basically how we've escaped the matrix in it in our twenties. <laughs> um, we're pretty much retired now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what the retirement age is back in England. I think it's like seventy now. But anyway, sometimes you have to just do these things. Um, I think we covered a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, just just how we've done it. You know what I mean? So little steps at a time. But yeah. And if it encourages anybody else to want to do it, then we're glad. Give it a go. Yeah, and you know, if, if if any of yous have the capabilities of moving out, like we say, we're lucky that, you know, all this land and, and the house is already here for us. It, it, it's not an opportunity for everyone, you know what I mean? So yeah. we just jumped at it. But if, if you do have the capabilities or, you know, if you own a house back wherever you live in and you can sell it for a couple hundred thousand pounds and, you know, over here you'd be a millionaire, you'd be able to have all this for that kind of money. Um, I, I, I say just do it and you know we're, we're always here if you need any you know we're only young but if you, if you need any advice or any advice that we can give then you know just just leave us a comment or send us a message or whatever you know we're, we're happy to help I think we're quite honest and truthful you know we'll, we'll, we'll say how it is you know if, if it's a struggle it's a struggle but 
we're quite open to the fact that we're learning as we go as well. I think that's just life, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know, you can't you can't think that you know everything, you know what I mean? So you just have to it's trial and error, you just have to try it and then you can say, right, I, that didn't work, yeah, or it's not for us or you know. But at the moment we're enjoying it, you know, we're doing we're doing alright out here. Um, we're trying to make it work, trying to live our pipe dream as as they say. <laughs> escaping the matrix and whatnot so yeah if you have enjoyed the video make sure like like i say just leave a comment like subscribe all that jazz and um, like i say i have a few crazy ideas in my head and um, and we'll try to implement them as time goes on and um, stay tuned to see all that unfold <laughs> yeah just subscribe and um, we'll keep cranking out content and hopefully watch our farm develop watch our you know our family dynamic develop or, or whatnot so yeah hope you enjoy the video we'll see you on the next one